Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to do number 28 on the CBEST Elementary Math Teacher Practice Test. 28 is a word problem. You, you notice here that you know, besides there being a lot of words in this passage, you notice there's no diagram, there's no equation or expression to solve. It's strictly a word problem. And another interesting uh, where they give you a scenario in this box and they, then they ask you a question on it. So these are those, um, they give you a scenario, and that's this. we're going to see a series of problems like this in the box is that real life uh, scenario, and then they ask you a math question, and then we have to determine which is the correct answer. So let's, uh, let's first start, when you have these ones, first start by reading over the scenario that's described in the box. All right, so here we go. Number 28 says, read the information below, then answer the question that follows, focusing in on the box now. A refrigerator in a school cafeteria is partially filled with 42 sandwiches. There are 13 turkey sandwiches, 14 cheese sandwiches, and 15 egg sandwiches. By the end of the lunch period, 21 of the sandwiches have been sold. All right, now let's take a quick moment and organize that information. What's our central image? Again, this is our noun that appears more than any other noun our major image in this passage that appears more than any other noun in the in the passage. What is it? Isn't it sandwiches? Right, sandwiches again here, and another one here, and here, and here. So we're really talking about sandwiches. What about sandwiches? Well, we're starting with 42 sandwiches, of which we have 13 turkey, plus another 14 cheese, plus 15 egg sandwiches. And I get this number sentence, which is sort of contained in the first uh, two sentences of this uh, passage. Then it gives me a, a new piece of information. It says, after lunch, there's only 21, sam uh, 21 sandwiches that have been sold. So we, so we sell 21. Uh, that means minus 21. And what we're left with is 21 sandwiches you know, in that refrigerator. And that's just good to think about. We don't know how many... How many egg, how many turkey, how many cheese have been sold? All we know is that 21 have been sold. So let's continue on with the question. It says, which of the following facts can be determined from the information given above? And this word facts is really important. It's got to be something that's very clear that we can, we can pinpoint in the question. Um, so it says, the number of cheese sandwiches sold. Well, does it say that? Does it tell us specifically the um, how many cheese or turkey or egg sandwiches have been sold? No, it doesn't, so we cross that one off. The cost of a turkey sandwich. Again, the cost of any of the sandwiches, none of that information is in the question. The total number of sandwiches that can be placed in the refrigerator. We really have no clue. I don't know. No, we have no clue on that one. The total dollar sa sales of the sandwich during the lunch period. Well, if they told us that each sandwich was a dollar, then we could, yes, we could find out that the total amount made or the total amount they could sell or, or make during that lunch period. But no, we don't have that information on any of that. And then this last one, the number of sandwiches are remaining in the refrigerator after the lunch period. And that's kind of what we solved in the beginning. Just We got to that answer just by sort of organizing the information and sort of seeing that if there's 21 um, sandwiches that have been sold, 42 minus 21 would get us a remainder of 21 sandwiches. And that is something that's clear. And we do have the information in the question to actually get to the answer. What I like about this question, I don't think it's a particularly hard question, but what I like about it is it's going to start, it introduces some of those elements that you're going to see on the harder um, word problem and algebra word problem questions, which is a scenario that they give in a box, a question based on that scenario, and a whole series of, uh, of uh, options. And you have to be very careful when you have a, scenario, uh, a problem like this, is read over this passage very, very carefully and organize the information on the top. And then you want to continue and sort of see if that helps you get to the correct answer. 
In this case, the answer is E. Okay, team, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Have a great day. Bye-bye.